Hello, my name is Keith Barker and welcome to my channel and this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the several ingredients that goes into the recipe for success. And one of the ideas that we can keep in our minds as we enjoy these videos together is that inch by inch, life's a cinch. If we just make small changes, that can lead to enormous results. So in five or 10 years from now, as we look back on these videos and fond memories, we think, oh my gosh, all I did was this and then that and this, and now look where I am. That's really the secret. It's making small changes, being consistent, having fun while you're doing it, and then you're gonna end up with a better result as if you didn't start at all. So one of the first steps in that entire process about improving and changing and becoming better is to identify what we want. Now, back in the 80s, I was very, very motivated to succeed. Uh, when I grew up, I, I was small. <laughs> On my driver's license, which was uh, 19, I got my, um, I think it was 1980, was when I, got, I turned 16, I got my driver's license. And on that driver's license, it said, Keith Barker, me, uh, five feet tall, 82 pounds. That was my size. And so I grew up with a pretty serious inferiority complex, thinking everybody's better than me and more talented than me. And, and I, found, I found out that a lot of people think that, that everybody else is better somehow and I'm, I'm less than. So I had a really strong motivation to um, prove myself. The height came naturally, thank, thank goodness. Um, and so a big part of achieving what we want, and this is the first step I would say in that journey, is to identify what we want our life to look like. So my, my I'm gonna say homework, but I would encourage us, me too, to take a look in our minds 10 years from now and think about what we want for ourselves. Now, I don't want to be an astronaut in 10 years, and that's not realistic at my age to be an astronaut. I'm not in the, in the space program or anything else, but take a realistic look at where you'd like to be. So some of the things we should consider are, what do my friends look like in 10 years? Meaning what kind of friends have sur I surrounded myself with? Uh, what is my family situation? Um, what is my my lifestyle like? Uh, what is my reference to money? Uh, am I comfortable? Do I have to worry? Is it a, a feeling of scarcity or do I have some money in the bank and things are calm and, and, and nice? Or what skills do I have? And the more senses we can put on this, and I would strongly recommend to take maybe a half hour sometime between now and the next video that we watch together and sit down and just describe what your life would be like or what you want it to be like in 10 years. Now, technology's changing and careers are changing and so forth. So we may not be able to identify exactly what field we want to be in, unless you know for sure. And then you can put that there too. But the more senses we can put on it, uh, what does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it sound like? Put all those emotions in place as, and then project and write it out. What does your life look like or what do you want it to look like? That's one of the key steps because if we, if we don't do that, if we just say, well, I'll just let life happen to me and whatever they want to offer me, uh, whatever they tell me to go get training on, I'll do. That is not going to get us to where we want to be. So as far as we, as far as getting a goal set of what you want your life to look at, like the next step would be to write interim goals. So your homework right now before the next video is to just write out on paper or digital, doesn't matter, write out what you want your life to look like in 10 years. What part of the world are you living in? What's your general income look like? What's your peace of mind look like? Your family, your friends, your social engagements, what does that all look like? And then we're gonna break it down. Now, as an example, I dug out, <laughs> this is the, one of the oldest pieces of paper I have. Um, I wish I dated it, uh, like on the top, but it's a, it's a vision statement I had for, I think it was like one year out. And uh, so we're gonna take a 10 year goal and I'll walk you through this in the next video. We'll take that 10 year goal and we'll break it into five year goals and then one year goals and then six month goals and then monthly goals. And we'll make it easy. We'll just do one step at a time. But I'd like to share with you, if you're open to it, uh, this document, which I wrote, I think it was 1986 that I wrote this. This is probably a one year goal. Uh, so as you write your goals out and stuff, maybe make a note, but here it is. On April 26th, 1987, I, Keith Barker, will be making $24,000 a year and will be worth that to my employer. Uh, one of the secrets I've discovered is that we always want, my dad taught me this. My dad and I don't agree on everything these days. He's almost 90 now, great man. 
uh, but we don't agree on everything. But anyway, one of the things he taught me was do more than what you're paid for. Provide value above just what you're being paid for. And if you do that, you'll be more valuable. And one of the stories I remember is, is from Zig Ziglar, some old motivational speaker that I really loved many, many years ago. Um, he's passed away since. But one of his stories was about two uh, markets, two little like corner store markets, uh, maybe put it back in time 40 or 50 years ago. And when one store, let's call it store A, would run out of supplies, like run out of uh, olives or beans or whatever it was, at store A, they would run their, their messenger over to store B to borrow a few cans of that just to get it by until the new shipment came in. And at store B, the employee there who was sweeping the floors noticed that the kid from store A was always running. Like, I need these, sign, run. And the kid at store B asked his boss, why is that guy always running? He's always like motivated, doing more, you know, just really pushing it. And the boss over here said, oh, he's gonna get a raise. And the kid said, how do you know that the kid over at store A is gonna get a raise? And the boss at store B said, because if his boss doesn't give him a raise, I'm gonna hire him and give him a raise. And, and the whole concept is if we do more, we provide more value than what we're being paid for, um, it's a win-win. And if our current company is not willing to provide for us or we're not getting along there, um, there may be other opportunities elsewhere, but do more than what you're paid for. And the second step is always be studying and learning to learn more skills than what you need as a bare minimum at your current company. We'll have a separate nugget on that. So I digress. Um, I will accomplish this by doing more than is what, what is required of me. I will take complete charge of the people I serve, the equipment I use to serve those people, and the accompanying paperwork. I was a, a technician back in the day at uh, EDS, Electronic Data Systems in El Segundo. Um, and I served companies like Hughes Aircraft, Blue Cross of California, General Motors, and a few others. I am complete and accurate in all that I do. I communicate well and make sure I understand what others are communicating to me. I look good and I feel good. I am a big thinker. I think big about everything. I believe in happiness, prosperity, and success. I like myself. I take care of the details effectively so that others can rely on my accurate completion of paperwork and loose ends. So I'm thinking I had a, a challenge <laughs> with being so young, uh, doing all my paperwork and finishing up. So um, that's probably why I added that. I make good decisions. I am honest with myself and others. That way I never have to worry about what I said to who, if you tell the truth every time. Um, I will read this statement every day and every night, and by doing so and signing below, I believe that the above will continuously become more accurate, and the $24,000 a year by April 26, 1987 will be a reality. And I signed it. Keith Parker. You know, and I found this, uh, uh, I don't know, I was cleaning out my office about a year or two ago, and I found this, and I thought, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to hang on to this even longer, because... It's amazing what can change. This was like a one-year goal. I had a 10-year goal. And another question that comes up is, okay, how much do we share? And the reality is that's dicey. I think I'll do a separate nugget just on that. Because if you and I have a huge goal, like a 10-year goal, and we share it with people, not everybody's going to be on board with us. It just, I, I'm sorry, not my fault, but they're not going to be on board with us. So. What I chose to do, and this has been true most of my life, I'll have the huge goals, the ones that are almost embarrassing if somebody's looked at them. And then I'll break them up into five-year goals and then one-year goals and then uh, goals for the week. And then what I'll do is I'll commit publicly about a lot of those little goals. For example, I um, <laughs> there's a gentleman at work, Jeremy, Jeremy A, last initial is A. And I had a goal, I still have a goal, of dropping to 15% body fat or less by June. We are having a meeting up in Oregon. And so uh, he said, hey, Keith, why don't you p commit to that publicly? Because that's a technique that I often encourage people to do, to commit to others, to give a little more positive pressure to do those things that we need to do. And so I did that commitment and it does make a difference. Just like what I'm doing right now, I've just committed to everybody uh, who is gonna view this, that by June of 2019, which is this year, <laughs> I'm going to be at 15% body fat or less. And that added, added pressure to deliver is now present. So that's just one of the several techniques that we're going to be talking about. So um, I've got a lot that I want to share. 
I believe that every human on the planet has the opportunity to move the needle, to make small changes, to uh, measure those changes and adjust and improve, not beat ourselves up very much, but keep it going. And huge changes can occur by small, consistent modifications in what we think and do that are measurable. So what I'd like to do is your homework assignment, and I'd like you to do this, is I'd like you to envision, take a few minutes, envision 10 years from now, what life looks like. Uh, are you a non-smoker? I hope you are. <laughs> uh, do you have a little bit of money in the bank? Do you have a home that is the one you'd like to have? Uh, are you in the relationships that you'd like to have? Do you have friends that you'd like to have? Um, spell that all out, and I would do it on, I like paper paper, because I'm old maybe, but something about writing it out, all those details, and then what we'll do in a separate video is we'll go ahead and I'll walk you through the process of chopping that down into smaller chunks that we can then realistically start modifying our behavior to get to. And it is totally worth it. So that's the homework assignment that I'm asking you to do for this video. So as you do that, if you want to leave a comment, that'd be great. Uh, please don't share your big goals uh, until we have that discussion on the benefits and pros and cons of doing that. But if you just leave a comment saying, I've got my 10 year goals or vision written, that would be awesome. I appreciate your participation in that. And we can move the needle and make a difference in our lives, in our families' lives, in the companies we serve, and it is totally worth it. So I will see you in the very next video. If you haven't already, please click on subscribe, click on the little bell icon to get alerts when the new videos come in, and I'll see you, my friend, in the very next video.